Welcome back to DXB Today. Bit of a medical special for you today on the show. Uh, we're looking at how the sort of barriers of healthcare being pushed uh, here in the region at the moment, what the future of medicine looks like and what role uh, Dubai and organisations here in Dubai are playing to that end. Well, our next guest turned her personal struggle with stress into a global healthcare platform supporting patients, providers and suppliers at every stage. Decade of health and wellness research driving her mission as she's revolutionizing the healthcare industry. Uh, please welcome Yunche Wilson to the uh, to the stage. It's not a stage, it's a <laughs> stage, 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 but it might as well be a stage as well. <laughs> um, can't thank you enough for your time. Thanks thank for joining us. I appreciate us. it. We want to find out more about MedX Bay. Yes. Uh, and how? Uh, what sort of role does that play on it? In, 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 as we say, the, the future of healthcare here. So. Essentially, the simple way to put it is that we work with patients, healthcare providers, and medical suppliers to bring together an entire ecosystem. Okay. From a patient journey perspective, we're focusing on making sure that we're with you from diagnosis all the way through preventative care. And you can't have that without education. Education is the ethos of everything we do. It's our foundation. And we pull that through every single step. So we're not talking about just conventional care. We're talking about true integrated care, holistic, traditional, and specialty as well. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you actually say are the main challenges? Because you've spoken about the future mm -hmm. and, and how we have so much to look forward to to increase, I guess, the state of healthcare as it, as it is today. But what do you think are the current challenges that we're facing? Uh, that for every one of those individuals, it's plenty. Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking about um, healthcare at, as a foundation for patients, it's education. They don't know what they don't know. How can you seek help when you don't know what's actually wrong with you or what options are available to you? Mm -hmm. So we aim to close that gap by doing that first and making sure that they feel supported through community because a lot of times that journey is lonely. I know for me, when I was going through what I was going through a decade ago, I didn't have the information, I didn't have proper access, and I was immediately misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. And that lack of information put me on a decade long journey to figure these things out. I wanna close that time frame for patients. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to support our providers because if we don't, they burn out. And we saw that post COVID. We saw what was happening to them and we're not seeing the same, we're seeing a stronger attrition rate happening now. More and more providers across the board are quitting. How are we replacing them? What are we doing to support them? So while we talk about AI and all of these great things, these tools, they too need to be educated and feel supported that we're not trying to replace them, we're trying to amplify and empower them. Mm. Right. Yeah, and say so, um, we talked before the show a little bit about challenges. Yes. So I'm the CEO of a group of hospitals. Mm -hmm. A important pillar of our forward-looking strategy is digitalization. Yes. So, in theory, I'm the customer or a possible customer. Mm. But what are the challenges that you, your company, has faced since its inceptions in adoption and getting organizations like mine? and even organizations like mine that are very digitally savvy and we are going to be going forward, yeah. uh, we, we talked about some of those challenges that, that you have been facing and still face that the market faces. Absolutely. Uh, How, so there's a couple of different ways we're overcoming it. One is that uh, we figured out very early on that hospitals and groups did not want to change their entire technology system because it's not just what the you know forward and front end patients or um, administrators are using it's tied into all of the back end stuff and that's crazy to think that you can come in and change that so you realize you need to create a tool that provides this external use um, case situation they can use our platform from a telehealth perspective which is then also supported with ai and when we're talking about supporting ai we're not saying that um, this is something they have to go and learn a whole new way of being and it's like some a new job on top of another job the goal is to take some of that administrative burden off allow the ai to uh, follow up with patients automatically after telehealth services um, work to create a better flow as as a whole because the, the time frame we're talking about 10 20 percent of, of uh, downtime away from the from the provider so they can focus on what they went to school for which is patient care so uh, one of the phenomenal things that we've we've done is that we've partnered with this amazing company called stack.io to really amplify how we're looking at ai across the board so everything from a digital hospital to ai agents that directly work to support the use case that's happening within hospitals and institutions today and modify that as we go so instead of integrating directly we're saying hey use us externally as an app as a tool so we can help you bring more business so you can focus on what you do best 
So just going back and talking about like integrated healthcare, which you mentioned just there, why do you think integrated healthcare is the future of healthcare? Oh man, um, how much time do you have? <laughs> Another show. Fine. Another show. So essentially, the when you're talking about integrated care, you realize that you, as a human being, are a very complex, amazing, beautiful machine. And in the same way that you would care for a car, with so many different ways, taking it in for it to get uh, oil change and tire change and all of these different things that you do to maintain it, we often don't do the same thing for our physical being. So it's one thing if you go in and it's like you um, you get sick of of any kind. You've got the flu. We have some people that just go right into the doctor, opposed to understanding and being educated to say, well, if I've got a cough and I've got a bit of congestion, I could perhaps use ginger, honey, and some tea and a few things to kind of help that. The doctor doesn't want to see you for the flu. They want to see you for the big problems. That's what, that's what they went to school for, right? So we're talking about a bit of traditional holistic care there. Now, if you break your arm, you're in an you're in a, uh, accident, yeah. That's conventional care. You're going to the emergency room. You want to be cared for. Your rehab, however, may look a, kind of uh, twofold. You may have a bit of conventional care with a bit of holistic care where you're doing physiotherapy, red light therapy. Understanding what these options are helps you to create a much more robust healthcare plan for yourself. Mm. But you can't advocate for yourself if you're not educated and you don't know what's out there. It also takes the pressure off the system. Exactly. It? Because I mean, exactly. I think we'll all agree that, you know, especially with the insurance set up here. A lot of people, how often do you need to go to the hospital? You know, for the ailments, they go into the hospital, but you still, you've got the insurance back in there, so you're thinking you're gonna be covered, et cetera. That's your first point of. Right. You need that sort of common sense to reduce a little bit of the stress on the network as a whole. Exactly, yeah. and, that's what, and that's what I found over the last 10 years, speaking with providers, speaking with patients, realizing that they would love their patients to be more educated so they could focus on the bigger yeah. issues at hand. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a global issue. For sure. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really interesting to get an insight into Medex Bay as well. Thank you so much. You're going to stay with us though. Okay. Because I believe, Nimi, it is time for DXB in 60. It is. It ah. is my favourite part of the show. Uh, so, <laughs> Brian, no pressure whatsoever. But we're going to be putting, and you, I, I can, you can tell by your face, he has no idea what I'm talking <laughs> about. No um, 60 seconds on the clock. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. We're just going to get to know you a bit more. So, if we can start the clock in three, two, one. Uh, what was your first job? First job working delivering newspapers. Wow. Your, what is your motto in life and in work? Uh, help others. Mm -hmm. If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Ooh, tough. Um, back to Tuscany with my wife. Beautiful. With the wife as well, he added okay. that. I like that. If you could have an AI assistant, what tasks would you want it to handle? Um, responding to the thousands of WhatsApp messages. <laughs> Same. Favorite movie or series that you've watched? Favorite movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. You will go to restaurant right here in Dubai. Casamia, the mm -hmm. Meridian. And what is a skill that you wish you had? Juggling while riding a unicycle. <laughs> and how do you unwind after a busy day? Uh, going to the gym, meditating, and talking to my wonderful wife. Mm -hmm. And lastly, why Dubai? Um, I. I was here with Johns Hopkins in the UAE 17 years ago, and then I, I left and I was working in Europe. Uh, I was looking to start a digital health company, uh, similar, very similar to a, a guest today. And I was really looking at all over the world, where? And it was Dubai, it was the best place if you're gonna be doing something digital and for the future. So I came back. Love that. Love that. Thank you, Brian. That's your DXB in 60. Right, bless you. Really, thank you. Thanks. Great to see you yet again. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us this evening here on DXB Today. We'll get you back very soon. And thanks Wonderful. very much indeed for being with us in your chair. Thank you very much indeed. All the best with the, uh, with the venture. <laughs> and I'm sure our paths will cross again. Right. Um, our guests might be leaving us, but you're not allowed to leave us. Nope, you cannot leave us because we've got a very, very special performance. Andrea Flores, this one is one you do not want to miss. Playing us out after this. <laughs>